friends welcome to rapid revision for computer science students in this section of theory of computation we will be discussing the various types of grammars that is we will be discussing what are type 3 type 2 type 1 and type 0 grammars and we will formally define what these grammars actually are afterwards we will be discussing the chomsky hierarchy and then subset properties we will be discussing in order to solve the questions regarding these types of grammars in order to know what we are dealing with, we should know that what the, what is the type of the grammar. So, let's get started. So, uh, basically, there are four types of grammars that is type 3, type 2, type 1 and type 0. Type 3 grammar is also known as regular grammar. Type 2 grammar is also known as context-free grammars. And type 1 grammars is also known as context-sensitive grammar or CSG. And type 0 grammars is also known as recursive enumerable grammars. So let's get started with the type 3 or regular grammar. In the type 3 or regular grammar, we can say like, what is a regular grammar? Before discussing regularity, we will first discussing the linearity. What is a linear grammar? In the linear grammar, we can say like, in the LHS part, that is left hand side, uh, at at least or we can say exactly one okay in the left hand side exactly one non terminal must exist and in the right hand side part that is right hand side at most one at most one non terminal must exist so that is the rule if a grammar satisfies this property then it is known as linear grammar okay that is on the left hand side one non terminal and on the right hand side at most one non-terminal is there then we will say that grammar as linear grammar so in the linear grammar also these are of two uh, three types we can say that is left linear grammar middle linear grammar and right linear grammar so left linear right as the name suggests are based on the position of the non-terminal that is present on the right hand side we are dividing into left right and middle uh, on the right hand side part, if the non terminal is present in the left hand side part, then it is known as left linear grammar. If the grammar, if in the grammar the uh, terminal is in the mid, non terminal is present in the middle of the productions, then it is known as middle linear grammar. If in the uh, production of right hand side part, if we get the uh, non terminal in the right hand side, then we know we, uh, we call this grammar as right linear grammar. So, let's now define what is a regular grammar. A regular grammar is uh, either a left linear grammar or a right linear grammar but not both. Okay, so that is the point that has to be noted that the linear grammar, the linear grammar, if the grammar is linear grammar, we cannot say that it will be regular in any how, in any case. So, if the grammar is either left linear or either right linear but not both at the same time then it is known as right uh, then it is known as regular grammar but not both okay so that is we can say then it is known as regular grammar um yeah if a grammar is regular grammar then we can say that it is also a linear grammar but reverse is not true that is uh, if it is a regular then it will be linear but if it is a linear grammar then we cannot say that it is regular grammar because only if the grammar is either left linear or right linear but not both at the same time then only it is known as regular grammar so that is uh, that is uh, we have discussed about the linear grammars and what the what is a uh, regular grammar actually Actually are. So let's now formally define the properties, formally, uh, formally define the type 3 grammar or regular grammar. So let's get started friends. So we will be filling this table in order to formally define it. First of all, for the regular grammar, uh, I've already told you that either left linear grammar or either right linear, then it is known as regular grammar. So left linear what is uh, i've told you that when the grammar production suppose this is uh, a produces x b or x that is uh, where uh, a and b are uh, non terminals and x is a terminal so uh, let's write a b are non terminals and x is a x belongs to 
uh, sigma star that is uh, it is uh, it is belongs to complete language so here uh, we can see like uh, this uh, this production this non terminal is present on the right hand side uh, uh, yeah on the right hand side then it is known as right linear here suppose it is present in the left hand side part in the left hand side part it it is there that is here then it is known as left linear and if it is present in the right hand side part suppose uh, x b or x it is present in the right hand side part then it is known as right linear grammar so that is basically what is regular grammar or type 3 grammar now heading towards the context free grammar it may be formally defined as a produces alpha a produces alpha. Now, what is alpha? Alpha is combination or alpha belongs to the clean closure of variables and terminals. V is denoted by vari variables are denoted by V and terminals are denoted by T. So that is we can say like uh, A is a non-terminal. Um, one non-terminal is present exactly one on the LHS part and on the right, si right hand side part. The, it should belong to the clean closure of variables and terminals. So that is uh, that is the definition for context-free languages, for, sorry, context-free grammars or type 2 grammars. Now for type 1 grammars or context-sensitive grammars, we, we may formally define it as alpha produces beta, where alpha belongs to, alpha beta both belongs to V plus T plus, V plus T plus, okay. Uh, so that is uh, this this is the first condition and second condition is that mod of alpha that is length uh, length of the uh, LHS part must be uh, must be less than equal to the length of the right hand side part. So this is uh, basically um, this is uh, important if we if we see that you should have to keep them in mind so you can commit mistakes here so you have to keep in mind that alpha beta belongs to variable plus terminal the positive closure of variables and terminal and length of the LHS part must be less than equal to length of the right hand side part now heading towards the type 0 or recursive innumerable grammar we can say that type 0 or recursive innumerable grammar it may be formally defined as alpha produces beta only but the meaning or the domain of alpha and beta changes that is alpha belongs to v plus t star that is clean closure of variable and terminals while beta belongs to v plus t plus that is positive closure of variable and terminals okay so that we can see like uh, alpha yeah, 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 there is uh, a mistake here. Al alpha belongs to V plus T plus. Obviously, left hand side epsilon cannot come. That's why this is, uh, it should be like this. Um, alpha belongs to V plus T plus and beta belongs to V plus T star. Okay, so that must be kept in mind. You can commit mistakes here. So, please don't do that. Um, here, uh, here must be plus because epsilon cannot come here. That's why it is plus. So positive closure and here it is V plus T star. Beta belongs to V plus T star because here epsilon can come. So that is the, these are the formal definitions. We have covered them. And then after that, I will be telling you uh, one of the important note that in the case of context uh, sensitive grammars, that is uh, this uh, CSGs, uh, one important note that it can also, uh, the S produces epsilon, S produces epsilon is also a valid production, is also a valid production if and only if, then uh, if uh, S is not present on the right hand side part of the grammar productions. I repeat that uh, S produces epsilon is a context sensitive, in context sensitive grammar S produces epsilon is valid only if S yes, is not present, not present in the right hand side part of the grammar production. Okay, RHS of grammar production. And this property you should apply. You should apply this property only if the grammar does not belongs to type 3 or type 2. If you are uh, aware of the fact that it is does not belong to type 3 or does not belong to type 2, then only apply this property. So this is an important note that should be kept in mind. Now, after that, I will be uh, I will be focusing on the Chomsky hierarchy, and we will be discussing for the points on Chomsky hierarchy. So let's discuss it, friends. Uh, first of all, it's very easy, and uh, we know that that regular grammar is there, or type zero grammar, regular grammar comes here in the middle, and uh, it is subset of the other sets. 
that is a uh, context free grammar or cfgs we can say this is known as type uh, yeah regular grammars are type 3 grammars regular grammars are type 3 grammars context free grammars are type 2 grammars context sensitive grammars are type 1 grammars and recursive enumerable languages are type 0 la uh, zero grammars recursive enumerable are type 0 grammars so that we can see in the picture also note that uh, s produces epsilon is uh, uh, valid only if uh, s is not present in the right, rs is right hand side part of the production uh, and this should be this property should be applied only when the type the, it is not type 3 and type 2 and also important point we can uh, note that the regular grammars except uh, or we can make a gram one grammar represent regular grammar represents regular languages context free grammar represent context free languages context sensitive will represent context sensitive languages and recursive enumerable grammars will represent recursive enumerable languages and also uh, that is uh, the point to be noted is that type 3 grammars or we can say regular grammars is a subset of type 2, 1 and 0. And also we can say type 2 is a subset of type 1 and 0. Type 1 is a subset of type 0. So that is all. That is a regular grammar is a subset of context free, context sensitive and recursive enumerable grammars. And uh, we can say that CFG are a subset of CSGs and REGs. And uh, type 1 that is CSGs is a subset of type 0 that is recursive enumerable grammars. So that is all for the grammars. I hope that everything is crystal clear. If it is not also please uh, re-watch re this video again. If any doubts are there, please comment on the video that will be uh, taken care of. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Bye for now. Thank you. Please like, comment and subscribe if you like the video.